For more on airport and airline security costs, I'm joined by, again by Seth Kaplan. He's the managing partner at Airline Weekly, an online publication. Seth, good, it's good to see you again. Um, I don't want to make light of the situation because this is very serious, but we had the shoe bomber, we had the underwear bomber, and now we have potentially electronic device bomber. What's new? Yeah, well, uh, you know, clearly information that, that has really scared the authorities into doing these sorts of things. And as we heard in the report there, uh, sort of scrambling to get all this going, people overseas being confronted all of a sudden with the fact that, you know, if they have simply a cell phone with a dead battery, they might not be able to get it on board. And, and so, you know, always erring on the side of safety, which everybody understands, but a lot of hassle and a lot of expense for airlines and their customers. So when, when we go through the airport today, we, we put our stuff into the bin, right? And they ask you to put your phones and your laptops. You have to take everything out. You put it in, and that goes through the x-ray machine. Are, are they worried about the phone itself? Are they worried about the battery? What specifically do you think that they're most concerned about? Yeah, well, and again, we can only sort of suppose from, from what we're seeing, you know, just to sort of judging by the actions that, yes, you know, the, the fact that a phone turns on indicates that the battery is, in fact, a battery, and that perhaps, let's say, if there weren't a battery there, there could be some sort of plastic explosive something that might not be detected by the X-ray equipment or, or even by those magnometers that we sometimes go through. All right, now, this is an odd question, but we were talking about this as we were getting ready for this interview, and what about all the phones and devices that are into the, the check luggage? Don't they go through some uh, similar x-ray as well for bomb detection? I mean, are they going to be able to detect stuff like that if it goes outside of where the human is going to be taking those phones? Yeah, and it is a good question. Different requirements, uh, certainly. You know, we've seen over the years, for example, lithium batteries at various times be a concern if they're not connected to anything. But if they're connected to a device, that's okay. So, so in this case, again, we can only assume by the fact that they're searching people for uh, these phones that don't turn on at the security checkpoints that they're thinking in terms of something that a person would actually activate physically. But, but all very circumstantial and, 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 and a very imperfect sign. Science, obviously, a lot of it is very much the art of the possible, uh, you know, trying to balance uh, keeping people safe with, with not doing something that's simply going to shut down the air transportation system. Now, I, I may not have the perfect sample size, but I'm, I'm going to estimate that most domestic people who fly within the U.S. who go through security, most are more than happy to, to go through the hassle of it. But a lot of foreign travelers I speak to, they, they, di they dislike the hassle. Sometimes when they go to the U.S., they've got to go through an extra layer of, of security. And I'm just wondering, do you believe that security for the most part across the world, there's a specific standard that has to be followed by when coming and going, not just to the U.S., but, but anywhere? Well, there's not one, and that's one thing that airlines have expressed a lot of frustration in this over the years. Is, you know, it's not just travelers, but airlines themselves that have to comply with very different regimes. And it's not just a question of strict or not as strict. You know, sometimes one country might seem very strict about one thing, but then lacks about another. And in fact, right now, these regulations regarding this, the phones, for example, having to be charged, that's something that's being uh, implemented on inbound flights to the U.S. So in that case, we actually have a, something that's stricter for flights coming to the U.S. than for flights within the U.S. Now, on the other hand, domestic flights are in some ways more sensitive because, Phil, you know, very short haul flights, people uh, flying between cities where they could drive if they wanted to. Those are people where, you know, when the hassle gets uh, too high, and we saw this certainly after 9-11, people say, you know what, forget it. I'm not going to fly, okay. but I am just going to drive now, instead. Now, in fairness, most of us already have our phones on when we go through the air. I mean, it's not that difficult for me to take out my phone and show you that, that it's working. I imagine that that's really the procedure. And, and again, for our viewers, it's not all travelers going in and out of the U.S. They're simply warning a, a lot of the countries are in either Europe or in the Middle East. Um, to talk about money for a bit, there was some talk a while back that TSA needed to streamline. They needed to cut their budgets. They needed to get more efficient. Is this going to have any impact on that? Yeah, and, you know, and again, in the end, it's a, it's a burden that airlines and their customers in, end up bearing. You know, we'll see. I mean, these regulations are all are all rather new, and and uh, you know, the 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 heightened taxes or, or fees, uh, as they would say, that, that that you just mentioned before, uh, those were in the works before. So you know, we'll see as time goes on if if they get the right balance there, and 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 if. You know, if even those heightened fees cover uh, the additional expenses of, of this uh, screen. At this point, 
you know, it, it's, it's, again, the changes are more the for inbound Seth, flights Seth, to the Seth, U.S. I'm sorry to interrupt you. The, uh, the yes. Airlines of America, the, this, this, this trade union that represents the airlines, says that it doesn't like these fees. I mean, I was a little bit surprised when they said that. They'd rather they just pay a, pay a flat fee, pay a regular fee, rather than this per passenger fee. Explain to us why that makes a difference for the airlines. Yeah, well, some things, Phil, are rather inconsistent. For example, the fact that you're paying per segment, let's say, when you're connecting. I mean, you, you only generally clear security once at the first airport. And then if you connect in Atlanta or Chicago or somewhere else, they're not screening you again. So, so certainly some inconsistencies there. And airlines, you know, beyond that, just, just very frustrated that they feel they're being overtaxed. You know, this is national security. So there is a question as to whether it's fair to tax airlines and their passengers specifically for something that the whole country should care about. You know, I mean, those planes back on 9-11, yeah. most of the people who died were not on the aircraft. And, you know, so, so we fund police, for example, on the roads from general fund dollars. And, and there's a question as to whether you know, we right. should be taxing just Seth, air passengers Seth, or something I, that affects everybody. I, we can continue on. I apologize for our time. Uh, it's good to see you again. Seth Kaplan, Managing Partner, Airline Weekly, an online publication. We're